brother is enjoying himself. Too bad. All good things must come to an end. And not just for him. We can't do anything. Roland mustn't know that we're on to him. Well, I understand the risk, Mom, but how are we supposed to get Megan and Sarah alone to warn them, much less get them out of the country? Excuse me, sir, but I uh, thought you should see this. What's wrong, Klaus? Something Prince Raymond must see at once. Your Highness. I know that tone. What's wrong, Klaus? It's one of those stories in the sensation-seeking tabloid, sir. Oh, Raymond, it's a front page photographs of you and me, and the headline reads, Will he abdicate for love? If Dorian is smart enough to discover that I bugged her room, she must have realized by now that I've been using her to get Sarah to Mendora, the first step in my taking the throne from Raymond. Then you have to act quickly, Your Highness, and do something about Dorian Lord. No, not yet. First, I must do something about Megan Gordon. You can't make that call, Jared. Billy, you saw the photo in the National Intruder. This man has a name. He's not some anonymous John Doe we found on the side of the road. He's Max Holden. And he's engaged to be married to a woman named Gabrielle Medina. Yes, but I... Well, his fiancée must be hysterical with grief. She thinks that the man she loves was killed in the accident. We can end her suffering with one phone call. And what about your patient? I'll be reuniting him with his future bride, his family, his friends. Not now. He can't be moved yet, can he? That's true. You're right. And we can't have his fiance coming here. No, we've been through that before. Strangers descending upon us, invading our privacy, threatening our happiness. Jared, I couldn't stay with you after that. They'd make me go away. Lily, you know that that is the last thing in the world I want. Then do this for me, Jared. Wait until he can go to his own people on his own. Someone you're forgetting in all this. Max. <laughs> you owe it to him to be there tonight. No. Come on, Gabrielle. Come on. It's time to get dressed for Max's mama. to live brought to you by ultra pampers plus because healthy skin begins with dry skin uh, max this is going to help you sleep uh, we have more work to do work that's going to take away all that pain work that's going to give you back everything that was lost everything i'm sure Don't you see my point now? We can't even think of any changes for him. What about his fiance, his family? All the people who are convinced he's dead. Will a few days make any difference? When he can call them himself or, or show up on his own power, they'll be just as overjoyed that he's alive. And they'll be spared the anguish of seeing him this way. It's a terrifying world for you out there, isn't it, Lily? Let's just say I prefer the one I have here with you. I 
feel safe. You feel loved. By a man with a wife and children. I'm not jealous. Because I have a part of you they'll never possess. As long as we guard our privacy. You know, I, the one fear I have is that someone will find out about us, about this place. Then the security that you've given me would vanish overnight. You talk as if you think that I'd abandon you. You know better. Sometimes I can't help it. Ever since I lost my parents, I... Ten years ago, and it's still hard to talk about, isn't it? When the plane went down, and I woke up and you were standing over me, a stranger, just another doctor. You turned out to be the only person in the world I can count on. You helped me survive, Jared, physically and emotionally. I can't forget that. I never asked for gratitude, Lily. I started as your doctor, needing to heal your wounds. And with my skill, I was able to give you back the beauty that was stolen from you. I couldn't help falling in love with you. That's why I'm happy right here. That's why I don't need anything else. I love you too much to do anything that can come between us. It can't do any harm to wait until Max Holden can contact his fiance himself. Her name is Megan Gordon. She's a guest of Prince Raymond's there, and I'm her mother. My name is Victoria Buchanan. It is imperative I speak with her. Yes, operator, please keep trying. Thank you. Still no luck? No, it's maddening. All the phone lines to the palace are out of service. Well, I keep thinking maybe through some miracle Roger was able to get in touch with her. I mean, not just to find out that she's all right, but she's got to be told about Max. The memorial service is this evening. Are you, are you going? Of course. I kind of thought we, we, we might go together. Oh, that's nice. Is it for the campaign? No, it's because we both cared about Max. What was it you used to say about him? <laughs> First they broke the mold and then they made old Max. That's true. He really lived his life to the full, didn't he? It's an awful shame that he's gone now, right at this point, just when he was starting to find happiness with Gabrielle and Al. Hmm. Well, right now, I might have some good news to offset the bad. Good news? Hmm? Hmm. I'm starting to think there was no such thing. Well, it depends on your reaction to it. Now, uh, after all the excitement of the campaign, you've probably forgotten what's scheduled for next weekend. the annual convention of the Newspaper Guild? At the Lakeview Resort, I had forgotten. Oh, my goodness, that was always our two favorite days out of town. Mm -hmm. What a shame. If only... If only what? Oh, it's nothing. It's wishful thinking, that's all. Maybe not. You know, uh, <clears throat> I got a call from the convention chairman, David Prescott. He would like the future mayor of Landview to be a featured speaker. Me? <laughs> well, you're the only future mayor I know. Oh, uh, with all the newspapers that are going to be there, you know, represented from all over the country, be a lot of free coverage. It's a great opportunity. Yes, it certainly is. Well, then I'll call David back. Tell him you'll accept? Yes. Oh, I should probably run it past Roger first. I'm sure he will okay it. After all, a chance like that only comes along once in a very rare while, right? Only if you're very lucky. Well, if we're going to go to the memorial, we'd better get going. Vicki. Yes? Don't worry about Megan. I'm sure the operator will get through to the palace. You'll be talking to her before you know it. This is more than rumor or scandal, it's downright treason. 
An article like this could unsettle the entire country. Well, don't blame the messenger. The story could have been planted by someone who has a vested interest in causing trouble. I'll give you three guesses who that someone might be. If Dorian is the one that is suddenly suspicious about you, why do something to Megan? Captain Frank, you know what to do. May I say, you look ravishing tonight. Oh, I bet you say that to all the Frauleins. If you'll excuse me, Captain. Would you, would you do me the honor of one little dance? But I really can. I deserve The music is irresistible, isn't it? If you don't let me go, then I will scream so loud they'll be able to hear me in the blue den. But you wouldn't like to spoil our little moment together, would you? Megan's right. This must be my brother's handiwork. Well, I hope he enjoys eating his own words, literally. No, Raymond, Raymond, if you confront your brother, he's only going to deny everything. Now, just let me have a crack at him. I'm sure I can get him to open up. Absolutely not. Just for a little while, that's all that I ask. You know how much of a braggart Roland is. I'm sure that I can get him to admit his true intentions, and then you can expose him. Your attention. Attention, please. As much as I enjoy a good waltz, it's time that we left for the ballet and applauded the professional dancers. Already, I trust? Not quite. There's something I want to talk to you about in private. Well, no, official business can wait. Our first obligation tonight is to entertain our guests. Sarah and Megan, I hope that you are looking forward to seeing one of the great ballet companies of the world. I wouldn't miss it for a king's ransom, shall we? Say, listen, have you gotten through to Sarah yet to tell her about this? No, no. I must have called that palace a hundred times since we last spoke, and nothing. It's really very odd. Yeah. Hi, Paul. I just want to tell you how much I appreciate you making all the arrangements here. Thanks. Max meant a lot to all of us. Michael, I'm surprised to see you here. Well, uh, Max and I were certainly unfriendly, Bo, but uh, he was like a brother to Brenda, so I'm here to pay my respects. I don't think I would have been able to make it without you. Thanks uh, for coming. Uh, I told you, I'll always be here for you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us faithfully and lovingly remember our brother, Max Holden, whom God has taken to himself from the trials of this world. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, 
What in heaven? The finest performance was turned in by the prima ballerina, Deborah Medina. Oh, you just say that because you find her so pretty. Well, was she really? I didn't notice. Actually, no, I was quite impressed by her talent. That's why I invited Ms. Medina and the entire company to the ball. Well, then, before they arrive, it'll give us time to talk. No, official business can wait, dear brother. Megan, let's go see that the champagne is flowing. Damn it, he's deliberately avoiding it. Which only makes me sure he's behind the article in the tabloid. If only Megan can steer him back this way. I, I... think she wants to tackle him one-on-one. -on -one. Megan's a wonderful actress. I just hope Roland doesn't see through her act. I really don't like the way Roland is holding on to Megan. Looks like the other way around to me. Oh, I can't believe she'd be interested in him. Well, whatever. We just have to get to Sarah and Megan before Roland goes forward with whatever he has uh, planned. Mrs. Lord, there's a phone call from your embassy. Would you please take it in the next room? I have a better idea, Herman. Why don't you take a message? Oh, I'm sorry. The message sounds very urgent. They wouldn't talk to anyone else but you. Very well. Cassie, I'll be back in a little minute. It just occurred to me that you haven't seen Marienstein by night. Would you allow me to give you the tour? Goodness, didn't you get enough of me on our daylight tour of the town? <laughs> well, that only made me want more. Well, what about your other guests? The ballet company? Well, they won't be arriving for a while. Any other excuses? Not that I can think of. Lead Excuse on. us, but uh, Raymond needs to talk to his brother. Now, perhaps later. Now, why did you do this? Do what? Am I suddenly responsible for everything that this, this fish wrapper decides to print? Roland, I know you're behind it, and I want to know why. Raymond, I know that you fully believe that I'm your enemy. For all I know, you believe that everyone is your enemy, but that doesn't make it so. Please, look to Sarah. Let her give you the peace of mind you need to lead us. Are you out of your mind? Sarah, this is the chance we've been waiting for. If I get Roland alone, I know I can get him to open up to me. What if he has other ideas? You know me. Now, can I handle men, or can I handle men? All right, there's always a first time. But this is our last shot at finding out whether Roland is up to something or not. I know I can do this. Ready? Yes, absolutely. Good, I'll go arrange for our coats in the car. Wonderful. What's this about you and Roland going somewhere? Megan is going on a moonlight tour of Marienstein with him. Absolutely not. Look, by the end of the night, I am going to find out whether Roland is after your crown or not. And what if something goes wrong? What if he tries to turn the tables? Megan, if look, he's look, as desperate me. as we think... Trust the me. car is warm and ready. Wonderful. Get him to admit his ambition. Then we could resolve it man to man. Well, I think it's natural to blame things on your loss of sight. Although I do think this rivalry between you and your brother predates your blindness. It does. And I'm tired of the civil war that's been going on between us our entire lives. I'm tired of being on guard against my own flesh and blood. Well, with Megan and me here, you no longer have to challenge him alone. No, no, this is our fight, Sarah. Not yours and Megan's. Damn it. I never should have let her go off with Roland. I should have realized that if he knows that what listen, she's up... Listen, listen. Megan can take care of herself. You really care about her, don't you? No, we've become very good friends. Mm. Is that all? Well, it's your love life we should be concerned huh? about. You gave up your wedding to come here to help me. I, if I were Bo, I'd be out here on the next flight. Mm, you must be reading his mind. You were supposed to come over here as soon as you could get some time away, but I, every time I try to call Land you, there seems to be some trouble with the phone lines. Well, how long did you try? All day. The operator keeps telling me that uh, there's some malfunction in the system. Well, that's odd. When things break down at the palace, they're usually repaired instantly. What if the embassy... Oh, that's a good question. I lifted the receiver, and then they cut me off. I went to phone the embassy, and they told me all the lines were down. How can that be? <laughs> we're dealing with Roland, remember? He can bug my residence, plot against Sarah. There's no telling what he'll do. Oh, no. What do you mean, oh, no? I saw Roland and Megan leave together. What? They, he said he wanted to take her on some sightseeing tour of the Capitol. And you didn't stop her? I couldn't. Raymond tried to stop her. She's <laughs> laughing and smiling. I mean, I didn't think it could be this dangerous. <laughs> it's dangerous and not just for Megan. Come on. Where are we going? <laughs> We're going to try and find a phone that works. We've got to call the State Department. I just hope we can get them out of the country before... Well, I'm glad we're finally alone. How are you? 
Yes, I had a long chat with your brother this evening. I know. You were both gone for quite a long while. It made me jealous, I must admit. Yes, well, I wanted to test your theory that Raymond had become withdrawn and paranoid. So you, you've seen how suspicious he's become? Oh, yes, he's suspicious. And after spending time with you, I think he has reason to be. I don't follow you. I think you follow me. Behind that charming exterior, there's a lot going on. Megan, I can assure no, you No, you don't need to assure me of anything. Now, you claim to have brought my sister here so that she could work with Raymond, and you claim to have Raymond's best interests at heart. Raymond doesn't believe that, and neither do I. And now that I have you alone, I would like some answers. Some straight answers, honest answers. Raymond thinks that you're trying to depose him to take his place on the throne. Now, is that paranoia talking, or is it the truth? We can't let him see his face, even with the bandages. We have to keep him away from all mirrors. The resulting trauma could be a serious blow to his recovery. You don't have to remind me. For months after the plane crash, you wouldn't let me see mirrors. I was beginning to think I was some sort of hideous monster. My methods were harsh, but uh, do you regret them now? No. So I remember the day you pulled off the bandages and I saw my face. All my wounds were healed. Thanks to you, I felt pretty again. How pretty? You were the loveliest woman I'd ever known. Jared, how can I ever repent? Shh. What good were my gifts if I couldn't use them to make you perfect again? Mm -hmm. And I want to do the same thing for Max Holden. You will. I know you will. You must do as I say. You mustn't see his face until I've finished all my work on him. Andy, I can't begin Dan, to tell Dan, you how before sorry... You, before you say anything, I just, I want to apologize. I'm sorry for my behavior at the hospital. I'm, I blamed you. Hey, hey, come on, Max come on, I... come on. Forget it, just forget it. Look, anytime you need to yell at somebody, just uh, call my service, okay? <laughs> Words just seem so, so meaningless at a time like this. Amen to that, Wanda. Gabriel, I am so sorry. Oh, you know, you know that baby Al and I that we're pals, and, and, and if you need a babysitter or you need me for anything, you, you just call me. Thank you, Wanda. Gabrielle, after all that's happened between us, I just want you to know I'm not just here for Max. I know how terrible this is for you. That goes doubly for me, Gabrielle. God knows we've caused each other a lot of pain in the past, but I want to I wanna forget all that. And if you'll allow me, I, I want to do as much as I can to help you and your son. Gabrielle is just so overwhelmed by this outpouring. I hope you both understand. Of course, of course. Gabrielle, I mean it. Anything. Anything you need, please just call. Something, Michael. What did I do? What you just said to Gabrielle, it's not only what you said, it's how you said it. You're just so free and you're so generous. Be careful, you'll ruin my reputation. Well, I don't know. Whatever I felt before about your reputation, I feel very differently. I see a new Michael Grant, and I sure hope that everybody else sees that soon. <sighs> Andy. Honey, I want you to know that your brother was one of the finest men I ever knew. Thank you. I mean it. He had a real knack for living life to the fullest, and he made everyone around him want to do the same. And that was a very rare gift, and I hope he will always be proud of you. Thank you. I'll call if you need anything. Okay. Gabrielle, our prayers are with you, with you and with Al. You know, we all know plans that you and Max made before, well, before the accident. I know there's nothing I can say to ease your pain, but if there's anything we can do. Thank you. She's still so stunned. Perhaps later when she's had some time to recover from the shock. Of course, of course. Excuse me. Uh, 
Victoria. Roger, we were just going home. Yeah, well, I just wanted to remind you of the speech you have to make tomorrow for the Independence. Oh, the Independence Club. I forgot about that speech. Thank you. Actually, now that you're here, this is good. Uh, I would like you, please, to clear my schedule for next weekend. What's next weekend? Well, it's the annual Newspaper Guild convention. And Clint told me I've been invited to be the guest speaker, so we'll be going together. Oh, really? Quite a coup for the campaign, isn't it, Roger? Yes, quite. What about Megan? How did she react when you told her about Max? I didn't. Try as I might, I haven't been able to reach the palace. <laughs> what is wrong with you? I ask you if you're trying to destroy your brother and you find that funny. <laughs> I'm sorry, Megan. Oh, it's just so good to finally let down the facade. It was bad enough playing the concerned brother, but acting the gracious, even amorous host. <laughs> oh, God, I'm glad you saw through me. I can finally be myself. You really are disgusting. <laughs> Raymond had you pegged right from the start. And vice versa. He's convinced that I'm consumed with ambition. He's right. I'm convinced that he's utterly incompetent. Also right. Even if he had his vision, he couldn't rule Mentor. He's cursed with the same bleeding heart our father had, a fatal condition. Yes, well, at least he has a heart. The people of Mendora need a strong leader, someone who can command respect and, and wield power. The man on the white horse. More like the man on the big screen TV. I fill that screen. Raymond recedes into oblivion, which is where he belongs. Well, it's a good thing for all of us that the Mendoras have better taste in leaders than you do. The Mendorans love a winner. That's me. Raymond will abdicate. I will assume the throne. And the Mendoran people will learn to love me. Oh, yes. And if they don't? Then they will learn to fear me. Either way, no one will prevent me from sitting on the throne. No one. Thank you for everything you've done. We're terribly grateful. Oh, you're welcome. I, I just wish that... I guess we all wish the same thing tonight. And do you take care of yourself here? Thank you, Bill. Gabrielle. Welcome. Gabrielle, I, um... I just wanted to say that I'm sorry. I've been saying that a lot today. I... I blamed everyone for Max's death. It was because I was angry and it wasn't your fault. It wasn't anybody's fault. I loved my brother and I know that... that you loved him too. And maybe that can help us bring each other... bring us together. We'll get through this. Of course we will. That's what Max would have wanted. Come on, let me take you home. Right. Nothing more need be said except to remind you that you're not alone. We're here for you, Gabrielle. Don't forget that. You've both been so wonderful to my daughter, but I, I think just now she really needs some time alone. Yes, of course. We understand. You give that boy of yours a hug for us, okay? Gabrielle, listen, um, I'm glad you made it here today. You did a lot for a lot of people. And I will be in touch. Okay? Thank you, Court. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now everyone's gone. Now you tell me. You tell me how you really feel. What do you feel? Nothing. I feel nothing. Well, 
And I, I think it would be best if we went home now, darling. Yes, that's a good idea. Why don't you go and get the car? I'll be along in a minute. Oh, Gabriella. I'll go. Please don't be too long. Whosoever believeth in me, I believed in you. For so long I looked to you for guidance and strength, to show me the way to go. I counted on you. But when I needed you the most, you weren't there for me. let Max die, and you let me be the cause of his death. Well, from this moment on, you are as dead as he is. Do you hear me, God? Are you listening? I made you a promise once. Here's another. I will never love again, ever. If I could have revenge on you, by God, I would. But you're too high and mighty and unreachable, aren't you? But your people here on Earth, they're not. Your little good people, I can reach them, can't I? If I can kill with love, Imagine the damage I can cause with hatred. Welcome, both of you, and thank you for giving such a fine performance tonight. It was an honor, Your Highness. Thank you. I, I feel like some champagne, would you mind? For you, Deborah, anything. Thank you. So, tell me, where's Megan? I was looking forward to seeing her this evening. Uh, she went on a, a tour of the city with Prince Raymond's brother, Roland. I'm sure she'll be back any minute. Oh. Well, then the least you can do is fill me in on all the scandal in Nancy. I've been trying to get hold of my mother, but I can't seem to get through. I hope nothing's wrong. Uh, not that I know of. Everyone was the same as usual when we left. Everyone? Even Ford? I don't talk to him that often. I know he misses CJ. Yeah. And Tina, too. I think he's doing all right without Tina. They'll bring some champagne in a moment, which gives us time for a dance. Oh, honey, I... Oh, no, 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 please. Show us how it's done. <laughs> You're worried, aren't you? Aren't you? They've been gone a long time. Too long. Operator, I don't care what your problem is, and I don't care what the problem is with the Mandoran phone company. I am the American ambassador, and I demand to be connected to the U.S. State Department immediately. Hello. Hello. Let me guess. More trouble on the lines. Oh, these people don't know what real trouble is. You can't make any calls in or out of this entire city. Well, you just wait till our government hears about this one. If our government ever hears from us again, Roland has all of his bases covered. If we only knew what oh, he was up to... Oh, we know all we have to know. Roland is power hungry, and if he thinks he is going to get it from Dorian Lord, well, he is very much mistaken. Before you challenge Prince Roland to a duel, we have a much more immediate problem, like getting the Gordon sisters out of here. I can't believe I let Megan leave the ball with Roland. You, know, you said that she left with her eyes wide open. I mean, maybe this was some kind of master plan she devised with Sarah and Raymond. What if Roland catches on to the plan? I mean, what if something... No, no, like... you mustn't think like that. I mean, Roland is ambitious, but he's not going to do anything rash. At least I hope not. For Megan's sake. Let me out of this car. Stop the car. Stop the car. You're wasting your breath. He'll only do what I tell him to do. His first loyalty is to his prince. Yeah, I had a dog named Prince once. I'm telling you, he had better manners than you, and he was a hell of a lot better looking, too. <laughs> Megan, we have a long ride ahead of us. We may as well be civil. Oh, civil? 
You kidnapped me, and I'm supposed to be civil? I prefer to think of it as protective custody. Protective? For who? Who are you protecting me from? Where are you taking me, and what are you going to do with me? Just relax and enjoy the view. I promise to show you some extra special sights here in Mendora. As you should know by now, I always keep my promises. Gabrielle, pick it up. Shut up! Candidates need rest. Roger, what are you doing here? Well, it was amazing. I was just about to ring the doorbell and Heron opened the door and told me to come on in. I guess he's used to your campaign manager stopping by at odd hours. Well, now that you're here, you can help me write the speech for tomorrow. No, no, no. I leave the speeches to you. Where's Clint? Clint is burning the midnight oil at the banner. He's finishing up the editorials for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Do you need to speak to him? Uh, actually, no. I was hoping to catch you alone. Oh, you were, huh? Mm -hmm. It's about the um, Newspaper Guild convention ne next weekend. I've uh -huh. been giving it a lot of thought, and I don't think it's such a good idea. But I'm supposed to be the featured speaker. Yes, but you're also scheduled to speak at several functions here next weekend. I know. I was hoping you could reschedule them. I'm afraid that's impossible. There wouldn't be enough time to reorganize in time for the election. Oh. Well, then I'll have to cancel them. All of them? Just so you can go on that weekend? Roger, this is a national convention. Clint and I have been going to them for years. Every major editor and publisher of every newspaper in the country is going to be there. Just think of the exposure. Well, frankly, I'm more concerned with the exposure here in Landview. You need votes from the local voters, not from people out of state. Oh. Well, yes, you certainly have a point. Uh... Oh, God, I hate the thought of... Of what? Disappointing Clint? Yes. He was very excited about the convention. So was I. I really thought it would have been good for the campaign, and, and it would have been good for the two of us. Well, it's your decision, of course, but as your campaign manager, I have to put it to you straight that if you want to win this election, you have to stay in town. Why don't you let me think about it tonight, okay? Okay. Good night. Good night. Oh, Roger? Yes? I tried to call Megan again. You too? You still haven't gotten through to her. Is if the entire country of Mendora has been cut off from the outside world. You know, I don't really care about the entire country of Mendora. I care about our daughter. Where is she? What has happened to her? I apologize for the long ride out here, but as you can see, 
It was worth it. Castle Landsdorf is famous throughout Europe. Really? For what? It's dungeons? No, we're more civilized than that. You could have fooled me. On the other hand, if you insist on creating trouble... If you think you can frighten me, you're wrong. Spare me your bravado. You're going to be my guest for a long while. Why don't you just cooperate? And if I refuse? The mountain air is supposed to be very good for your health. But the roads are icy and quite treacherous. The Alps are an easy place in which to be lost. I really think you miscalculated, Roland. Not only am I an American citizen, <laughs> but I happen to be the daughter walking. of a very influential newspaper publisher in the United States. You're a long way from Landview. Yeah, well, if that's not enough, I'm also a veteran of daytime television. Oh, really? Yes, really, which means I know how to defend myself. <laughs> While in Salzburg, production assistance was provided by the Austrian National Tourist Office. Mozart's Silent Night and the Sound of Music. Salzburg gives you the good life to live. Tomorrow, Tony's research of the family tree turns up long-lost grandpa on Who's the Boss? Then Kevin and his dad have a man-to-man -man talk about the wonder years. Tomorrow, all starting at 8, 7 Central.